Ten people were killed and three others were injured during the three-week-long of the Beltway sniper shooting spree in the Washington, D.C. area in October 2002. At around 5.20 p.m., a Michael's Craft store in Aspen Hill, in Washington, D.C. area, is where the first shot of the rampage is thought to have been fired. James Martin, 55, was shot and killed while crossing the street in front of a shopper's food warehouse in Wheaton less than an hour later. Four people were killed by snipers in Montgomery County, early on the deadliest day of the rampage. James L. Buchanan Jr., 39, while mowing a lawn, Premkamor A. Walaka, 54, Sarah Ramos, 34, while sitting on a bench near in a retirement community, and Lori Lewis Rivera, 25, while vacuuming her car. That evening, they committed a fifth offense by shooting Pascal Charlotte, 72, who was standing at the intersection of Georgia Avenue and Calmia Road Northwest, just across the district line. In addition to a tarot card, the shooters also left a note for law enforcement, but it was devoid of any demands. In the end, more than 30 different law enforcement organizations from the local, state, and federal levels would collaborate to find, track down, and apprehend those responsible for the attacks. Police had no solid leads other than conflicting accounts of a white van, a white box truck, and a dark Chevrolet Caprice close to the scenes of the incidents. Criminal profilers assumed that the sniper was most likely a white male, but this conclusion was largely drawn from the traits of previous serial killers rather than the circumstances surrounding the sniper. Police in Ashland discovered a shell casing and a note taped to a tree after Jeffrey Hopper, 37, was shot and hurt there. The lengthy letter demanded $10 million, threatened additional killings, and accused the police of being incompetent. On October 22nd, Honrad E. Johnson, 35, was shot and killed in Aspen Hill, and the police also found a second threatening letter. A second note, which demanded money and told the police to call at a specific time and location, was discovered by law enforcement officers at the crime scene. Although technicians at the U.S. Secret Service Crime Lab were able to match the handwriting to a tarot card left at the scene of an earlier shooting, the phone number listed in the note was invalid. Calls to the Federal Bureau of Investigation hotline and local police stations provided the police with additional information. The shooter's call to a priest in Ashland, Virginia, was the most crucial piece of information. For unknown reasons, the shooters told the priest about their crimes and asked him to tell the police to look into a robbery murder that occurred in Montgomery, Alabama, in September 2002. The U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service found evidence that connected Lee Boyd Malvo, a 17-year-old Jamaican who had been fingerprinted in December 2001, to the Montgomery crime scene. Further investigation revealed that John Mohammed, a Persian Gulf War veteran and certified expert marksman, had been seen traveling with Malvo. Mohammed and Malvo were further connected to the sniper case because they had been seen target shooting at a house in Tacoma, Washington. Criminal profilers' predictions proved to be completely false because the suspected snipers were an African-American man and a Caribbean teen. Mohammed was given a warrant for a federal firearms violation, and the police were able to identify the Chevrolet Caprice he was driving by make, model, and license plate number. On October 23rd, the police gave the media a description of the car, and later that evening, a driver reported that the car was at a rest area off of Interstate 70, close to Frederick, Maryland. Within a few hours, law enforcement officers surrounded the vehicle, discovered Mohammed and Malvo sleeping inside, and arrested them. A Bushmaster XM-15 assault rifle, a semi-automatic version of the M4 carbine used by the US Army, and a hidden firing port, cut into the car's trunk, were found after a search of the vehicle. The back seat of the car had been modified to allow a shooter to lie prone and fire from inside while remaining undetected. 
Investigators eventually connected the two to nearly a dozen additional shootings before the DC spree, despite the fact that their crimes occurred across several different jurisdictions. Malvo would have qualified for the death penalty in Virginia, where Mohammed and Malvo were charged. Mohammed was found guilty of murder and possession of firearm in November 2003. As a result of his involvement in the sniper killings, he was ultimately given the death penalty. In November 2009, following the denial of all of his appeals, he was put to death by lethal injection. In December 2003, Malvo was found guilty of charges involving murder, terrorism, and weapons, and he was given a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Malvo later entered pleas of guilty to additional charges as part of a deal with the prosecution, but was spared the prospect of the death penalty after the United States Supreme Court ruled in 2005 that the death penalty for juvenile offenders was unconstitutional.